amazing. It wasn't the birthday party 18 year old Sydney Corcoran had planned. Happy birthday. <laughs> but the fact that she can celebrate at all is extraordinary, considering how seriously she and her mother Celeste were injured nearly two weeks ago. The family had gathered at the Boston Marathon to cheer on Celeste's sister, Carmen. Sydney's brother, Tyler, decided to stay home at the last minute. They were at the finish line when the bomb went off. These powerful images show Sydney being helped by strangers and Celeste lying in the carnage, her husband, Kevin, struggling to stop her bleeding. The instinct just takes over. You take your belt off, you put a tourniquet on. Last week, Kevin and Carmen sat down to tell us about that awful day. And then I just laid down next to her and just told her I loved her and that everything would be okay. And I just kissed her face and just gently caressed her while people were trying to get to us. They were at the finish waiting for me. And um, I, was, I was terrified that my family was all gone. Everyone that I loved was there. Celeste, a hairstylist, and Sydney, a high school senior, have been recovering together, literally in the same room at Boston Medical Center. Sydney suffered a severed femoral artery, and Celeste lost both her legs. This week, they were strong enough to speak with us themselves. Despite being so close to the blast, they never lost consciousness and remember every detail. Celeste, um, what about your, your memory of that, that very moment? It was just, um, it was just crazy. I was just, I knew that my sister was coming around soon, and I was just kept, you know, scanning back and forth to see if I could see her. But then, when the bomb hit, I, uh, I just couldn't. I, I immediately, I think I was, I was just down on the ground because, of course, it hit my my legs. I just kept saying over and over in my head, no, no. So my husband was standing next to me. I had no idea if Sydney was hurt or anything. I just was down, and then he was. His face was over my face, and he was just like, "I've got you. You're hurt. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take care of you." And he saved my life. The pain, she says, was excruciating. I just wanted to die. I was just like, I mean, I. You know what? Actually, the, the thought was there because I was in so much pain, and then I just remember thinking, like, I can't. I can't. I don't want to leave my family, you know? There's still too much to do. Celeste had no idea her daughter Sydney was also badly injured, bleeding heavily from a severe leg wound. Sydney, still hoarse from being intubated during surgery, describes that day. It was it was really difficult. Just feeling so tired because all of the blood was leaving my body, like I turned white, my lips turned blue. So everything was tingly. I just felt like, like I, I was, I was fading. Did you know at the time that that it was you were in that severe situation? No, I mean the moment we were pushed back, I was in shock and I wasn't sure exactly what happened. When I was in the ambulance, I think that's when it like it completely just dawned on me, like like I I could be dying. Separated from her parents, Sydney feared the worst. I wanted to know where they were. I, I thought I was going to wake up and have no one left but my brother. In the hospital that night, Sydney learned her mother had lived, but she'd suffered a devastating injury. I knew I at least had my mother, so really, the legs don't mean anything to me. Like, I know it's hard for her, but I'm glad I have her. Mm. It's true. That, I mean, their legs, I liked my legs. <laughs> But, you know, if I can get a new set of legs and still be here and go through the milestones, her graduation, I have an older son mm -hmm. I'm, you know, so, so close to. I want to see, I just want to see everything in their lives. I'm, I'm not ready to leave. So, yeah, if it's, if it's with new legs, it's with new legs. It's the second time a medical disaster has hit the Corcorans. Three years ago, Sydney was hit by a car and spent a week in the hospital with a fractured skull. Her brother Tyler saw it all happen. He thought she was dead that time, so for him to live through this, I feel like emotionally, you know, he's, it, this is, has to be, he's, he's so strong, you know, he, he's, we've all been through so much. 
It was just horrible. Because I just, I didn't want to go through losing her again. But this family is not just Boston strong, they're Corcoran strong. We're all here. We're all alive. I got my baby with me, you know. Um, I couldn't ask for more. Not that their resilience won't be tested. A few days ago, Celeste hit a low point until this visit from some wounded veterans. Okay, I can't do anything right now. Right now, yes, but I'm telling you, and, and you know, with all my heart, you are going to be more independent, you know, than you ever were. Gabriel Martinez lost his legs in Afghanistan in 2010. He and four other Marines visited the mother and daughter. You look good. Thank you. you look real good. Thank you. This doesn't matter. This is just a change of scenery. What did they tell you to help lift your spirits? He came in here with his with his legs, and I was just amazed. He goes rock climbing. It sounds like there's nothing he can't do. It sounds like if you have the the spirit and you know that you want to do it. I can actually absolutely achieve it. Newfound friends are among the biggest comfort, especially from Bond's forge that day. Jeff Bauman was also captured in this unforgettable photo at the scene. He helped the FBI identify one of the bombers. After he visited Sydney on her birthday, Jeff, Celeste, and Sydney talked about doing rehab together. But before rehab begins, it's the little things that can bring a smile or cause a panic. I understand you even had a little visit from uh, Bradley Cooper, is that right? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tell me about that. That, that had to be exciting. It was very exciting. It was very exciting. Her heart monitor, actually, it's a funny story. <laughs> Your heart monitor got a little higher. Well, I was so stressed out because at that point I hadn't washed my hair. I still had like the debris and the shrapnel, whatever. I, literally, my hair was matted. Like I said, I do hair, you know, and I had my glasses on, and I was under no illusions that he was gonna, you know, walk in and be starstruck by me. But I just wanted to look my best for me, you know. Aww. He asked me for permission if he could kiss me on my cheek. Like, of course, I said yes. I'm never going to forget that moment. <laughs> He's our hero. But the leading man of Sydney's story is Matt Smith, one of the strangers who helped to save her life. What was he doing at the time to help you that allowed you to feel calm and feel like everything was going to be okay? He made sure that I was holding his hand. And he kept telling me to squeeze it and make sure, like, I, I could still do it. And he was just holding my gaze the entire time. He was getting right up in my face. And he just kept saying, like, just look at me, bud. People like you were real heroes that day. I mean, there could have been more bombs for all you knew. Um, did that enter your mind whatsoever? No. Um, the only thing, you know, we really just wanted to make sure she was okay. The Corcorans have also found peace, knowing police have tracked down the people they believe are responsible. So when you heard there was a capture, were you happy to hear that? Did it hit you in any way? I felt a relief. So did I. I wanted um, the person to be brought to justice. I didn't want them to hurt anybody else. I don't want hate in my heart for this person. I truly believe that they're sick. They have my pity. The family knows they face a tough road, but they will make it together. There's times when everything just kind of overwhelms you. I really believe that if you just kind of persevere and believe in yourself, you really have to dig down deep inside and just be like, I can, I can do this. It's going to be hard, but I can do this.